Now that we have seen an example in the previous video of how we can proceed to find the area under the graph of a positive function over a closed interval, we're going to try to formalize this process uh, a little more clearly. So we have seen that the process that we, we followed in that particular example was to approximate the area with uh, the sum of areas of rectangles um, by partitioning the interval into subintervals and for the height of the rectangle we were evaluating the function either at the left end point or the right end point of each subinterval. So on this particular picture we approximate the area under the graph of the rate function over the interval 0 1 by the sum of areas of rectangles that have one of their side that is on the x-axis and that corresponds to dividing the interval into um, subintervals of equal length and the uh, other dimension of each rectangle is obtained by evaluating the function at the left end point of the uh, subinterval. So we get some approximation with this process and of course we could do a similar process where each time we evaluate the function at the right end point of the subinterval giving something like that when we increase the number of some intervals. But we could still follow the same process and evaluate the function at a different point in the subintervals. For instance, we could each time, for the height of the rectangle, pick the value of the function at the midpoint of the subinterval. Like in this particular picture, you see that each time the height of the rectangle is given by the value of the function at the midpoint of the subinterval. Okay, now we would like to talk about the area under the graph of the function. In the case, the particular example that we've seen before, this one over x squared, the function was monotone um, at the right concavity and therefore we could uh, control the area with one of these um, sum of areas of rectangle above the area we're looking for, another one below, and controlling the limit of the lower and upper bound, we could conclude for the area uh, under the graph of the function. However, in a case like the one we have here, it is not clear that we can control what is below or above, and therefore it is not clear which one of these three rules we should pick um, and of course, what we are looking for is a process where it doesn't depend, the, the, the result we obtain for the area under the graph does not depend on the rule we pick to, um, to build these rectangles. Right? Whether we take we evaluate the function at the left end point, the right end point, the midpoint, or in fact something else potentially. So how, would, how should we formalize this process? So we have a positive function over a closed interval and we're looking for the area under the graph in red on this picture. The first step in the process that we have outlined before is to partition the interval AB into subintervals. And in the previous examples we used uniform partitions where we were just dividing up the interval into equal parts. Uh, this is not quite sufficient and we're not going to require that the subintervals have the same length. So a partition for us here is going to be um, just picking up um, n plus 1 points where the first point is A, the last point in, is B. And this way, uh, so x0 is going to be A and then we have x1, then x2 and we keep going. The kth subinterval is going to be between xk minus 1 and xk and we keep going with xn equal to b. So that gives us a partition with n subintervals. The first one from x0 to x1, second one from x1 to x2, and so on. And they don't need to be of equal length. So in particular, if I focus on the kth subinterval, um, as I said, all the subintervals don't have equal length, so I'm going to define the length of the kth subinterval as delta xk, which is of course xk minus xk minus 1. And I'm going to look at what I can do over this 
particular interval and then we are going to do the same thing over each sub-interval and sum up what we've got. So uh, in the processes that we've described before we had um, the approximation of the area under the graph of the function ap uh, approximated by the area of rectangles so in particular for the part of the area that is above this interval from xk minus 1 to xk uh, we could approximate with this rectangle and in that case you see that for the height of the rectangle we pick the value of the function at xk minus 1 at the left hand point of the interval we could approximate by this rectangle picking for the height the value of the function at the right hand point of the subinterval we could pick for the height the value of the function at the midpoint and get something like that the problem is we want to account for all three possibilities and more because uh, instead of taking always the midpoint we could take always one third of the interval or any other rule I might uh, think of so what we're going to do is instead of picking according to a specific rule we're going to pick a sample point in the kth interval and I'm going to call it xk star that's a sample point in the kth interval this sample point could be the left hand point, the right hand point, the midpoint or anything else in this interval from xk minus 1 to xk for the height of the rectangle over this interval from xk minus 1 to xk I'm going to pick the value of the function at my sample point and I'm going to use the area of this rectangle to approximate the area under the graph of the function over the interval from xk minus 1 to xk so this rectangle has width delta xk and height f of xk star and therefore its area which I will denote by rk is the product of f of xk star with delta xk now if we want to do that for every subinterval I'm going to need to pick a sample point in each subinterval and so that defines a pointed partition and as I have my partition and between any two of the red points of my partition I pick a sample point so I have x1 star which is a point that I pick in the first subinterval and x2 star that I pick in the second subinterval and so on so that gives me a sample point in each subinterval the sample points are in blue here on my picture and then on each subinterval I'm going to build a rectangle whose um, width is given by the subinterval over the x-axis and the height is going to be the value of the function at the sample point at the blue point and we obtain something that would look like that for the particular sample points that we have picked the sum of the areas of this rectangle is what we're going to use to approximate the area under the graph of the function the area that we are looking for so for one particular interval the kth subinterval we've seen that uh, the area of the rectangle was rk so now we have for the sum of the areas of these green rectangles we have the sum from k equal 1 to n because we have n subintervals of rk where rk is given by this um, value of the function at the sample point so f of xk star multiplied by the width of the k subinterval which is delta xk